So sometimes in life you think about changing, and this is the reason why you shouldn't. The 2024 Porsche Cayenne S. You see, Porsche Cayennes have looked the same since time. They have made some updates though in this 2024. In fact, it is the most extensive refresh Porsche has ever done. Take a look at these headlights. These are the Matrix headlights. They are very expensive, but they have really cool technology behind it. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the front, the side, the rear, the interior, and I'm also gonna take it for a rip. So here goes. Here's why Cayennes are super important for Porsche in general. It represents one third of all their sales globally. One third, that's a huge number for them. Now we've reviewed three other Porsche Cayennes on this channel. We've done the Turbo GT, we've done the E-Hybrid, as well as the last generation GTS. Today we're going to look at this. This is the S model. They've done some upgrades, they've changed the motor, give us more power, but not only that, they've changed the number of cylinders in this engine, which is super importante. They now have eight instead of six, which is a huge factor and that's why we want to bring it to your faces right away. This eight cylinder is gloriously smooth. <laughs> In the 2024 Porsche Cayenne S, and I'm so proud of Porsche. No, they did not give us a six. They got rid of the six, and they didn't put a four in either. They gave us an eight. Yes, this thing has an eight banger in it. I don't even know if it's called that, but it's a V8, and the V8 is back in the Porsche Cayenne S. Now you do get a six when you buy the base one, but in the S, it is now an eight. This makes 468 horsepower, and 442 pound-feet of torque with an eight-speed tranny. I'll put this thing into sport plus. All right, let's see what this thing can get and go. Okay. That was a really soft launch. I didn't like that whatsoever. I will try it again. I'm in sport plus, but there is no launch control. Stability program is off, and I will just simply not build boost. I'll simply hit the gas. Better, better, better. Okay, what do we got, what do we got, what do we got? 5.15. Okay, let's try it one more time. I feel like we can get better than that. 5.15, we can do better. We can get in the fours, baby. We can get in the fours. All right, so I found a way. I've put stability program back on and I'm gonna sort of work the throttle to make this thing a bit faster. So let's get it. A bit better, a bit better. There we go, that's better. That's better. What do we got, what do we got, what do we got? 4.96, yes, under five, under five. So there we go, under five seconds. Now the Cayenne's available in your typical SUV design, such as this, as well as the Coupe. Now it's got price points, so let's talk about them. The first one is the Cayenne Base at 79200 Then you move up to the Cayenne E-Hybrid at 91.7. Then is the S, such as this, at 95.7. Then you get the Cayenne S E-Hybrid at 99100 And then you get the Top Dog, the Cayenne Turbo E-Hybrid. It's like all jumbly in my mouth for 146,000 and change. That is a lot of pesos when you convert it. So let's whip out the magnifying glass and see what changes Porsche has done to the front end. Let's start off with this hood. Take a look at this new power dome. It's not exactly a big power dome, it's more like a baby power dome, but it's right here. It creases up 
and then creases back down again to give your eyes a little bit of excitement. Now moving down, you do have, of course, the Porsche logo that's flush into this hood. Take a look at these headlights because this is where it's at. All Porsches now come standard, or Cayennes now come standard with the Matrix headlight. But if you spend the big dineros, you get these HD headlights, which have 32 individual pixels, and they go off and on automatically to adjust the road in front of you. It's actually super cool to do at night because it's all automatic. It basically just shuts the light off when the cars on the other side are coming. I'm doing a horrible job explaining this, but it's actually pretty dope. The faster you go, the more linear the light becomes and it goes really far down the road. Pretty cool stuff. Now moving down from there, it's really boxed out. They've squared it out completely. You have these horizontal, I wouldn't say louvres, but this design that goes from end to end and it gives it sort of a mustache design. Then you have the LEDs right there. Pretty straightforward stuff from Porsche, but look where they have the radar, right in the middle. It's not to the side or anything. I like how it's placed right there. Just above it, you do have your front camera. And then the interesting part about it is how they've done the lower front spoiler, if you wanna call it that. It's this right here. It's just really, really high off the ground. Let's measure it and see how high it is. This is just really strange for a sports SUV. It's 18 inches off the ground. It's like it's supposed to be off-roading or something. So we live in a world where we're told we have to manifest and put it out in the universe for exactly what we want, but not with Porsche. We can just go to a dealership and pick one of hundreds of options. So let's talk about the options on this new paint color called Algarve Blue. That costs $970. Then, of course, you have something called rear axle steering, which is, of course, something important when you buy an S. So these back wheels do turn to make the steering a lot easier going around tight spaces. Then you have adaptive air suspension, including Porsche Active Suspension Management at 2720 Canadian. That allows me to adjust my suspension. That is cool. Then you have these 22-inch wheels that are amazingly good looking. I love them on this truck or SUV, depending on where you live. Then you have something called exterior mirror, exterior mirror lower trim and base in exterior color, which essentially means painted. Then you have exterior package in gloss black, totally get it, but it's an S. You shouldn't have to pay for that. Then you have something really, really cool. Locking wheel bolts. I kid you not, but don't worry. They make up for it because you have this. You have an exclusive cool gas cap. Come take a look. So on the back of the Cayenne, this part right here has no changes. You've got the third brake light, a little bit of washer fluid nozzles there, and then of course a rear wiper. All that is the same. Here you get a little bit of change. You get this light bar that goes from end to end on the top, and on the bottom you've got a lower light bar that's sort of like a half C version because of course you have the P-O-R-S-C-H-E right there. Then you've got this piano black or gloss trim. It's so light underneath it, you can't really notice it, but it's good because it creates this sort of three-dimensional image when I'm standing here. Then of course, the Cayenne S. And then of course, you have this. This is a towing package. Now in Europe, it does come out automatically, but here in North America, it's fixed because that's all we're used to. And if you're wondering what it tows, it tows 7,700 pounds. And then these exhausts, you've got quad tips these are bronze, but I look at them and they look black to me. They're pretty cool though. All right, Porsche, Cayenne, S or no S, we are in the new, updated. This is almost a full redesign in my opinion when it comes to the interior. This is a big difference. So let's start off with this dash because that is where the meat and potatoes is and we'll get over to the door panels, kind of the opposite of what I normally do. This dash is 100% digital in every way. There's no analog. You can't even order analog, which is weird because you can order anything else in this Cayenne to make it more specific to you. These vents are vertical. You've got this overlay in this sort of brushed stainless all the way down straight and clean. For the first time ever, you have a passenger screen that gives you all the same data here, but it's there. And it has this glare, so you can't actually see it when you're driving, but the passenger can. The steering wheel is from a 911. Love it. Okay, so the door panel. Squared off, 
you have three memory seat, you have this piano black trim on the top, then you have this light piece of, I wouldn't say leather, but it has this fabric that feels like it. Then you have again more of this stainless design, then you have a little bit more leather, then you have of course your sound system and then of course all your windows to pop the trunk, that kind of stuff, to fold the mirrors in, all that great things. The dash, you have your lighting so you can set up your rear fog lights, but the screen, check out this digital display. You've got lots of different designs you can mess with it. You can even have in this specific case, you have night vision right in the center. I love it. The steering wheel, I talked about it, but I'll talk about it again. This one doesn't have the sport chrono, but it does have the drive modes right there. Very simplistic, 911, I love it. Then you have something strange which people don't like, but it's okay. I don't mind it because it creates space right in the center console and that is the shifter. You have the park button, then you have this little shifter that goes reverse, neutral, drive, and of course M because this has paddles on the steering wheel. That part where it's placed, a lot of people don't like. I personally don't mind it. Then of course you have your typical Porsche screen. It does have wireless Apple CarPlay and of course Android Auto. I talked about the fact that it does have the passenger screen, thumbs up. Moving down from there, you have two vents in all black with that same sort of finish. Again, not a lot of people love the piano black here. Of course, fingerprints and all that stuff. And again, they don't like the fact that the shifter is missing here. It's a Porsche, it should be up there, it should be down here. But I understand because Mercedes-Benz has it up here. And everybody's sort of getting away and putting these really small ones. So what's the point of putting it here? Once you're in drive and park, really, who cares? Cool information I'm about to tell you. Wireless charger, it is cooled. Yes, a cooled wireless charger. How sick is that? You've got two USB-Cs. When I pull this tray back, again, more gloss black. And it has absolutely no writing on it whatsoever when the vehicle is off. Just one, two, three, four, five little hardy buttons. And those control your HVAC controls. This center knob here controls your volume. And then moving down from that, you have a little storage space or something for garbage. It doesn't really fit a cell phone very well. It does hold it, but it rackets back and forth or rattles back and forth. I put my cell phone more in the cup holder so it gets wedged in between because you have two of them and a 12 volt cigarette plug. Then underneath here you have the world's smallest storage in the center console or center glove box here. Not a lot of space. It doesn't slide backwards and forwards so this is kind of all you're getting. I did realize though when I whipped around a quarter pretty fast I did kind of hold on to the passenger handlebar here. Not mine but the passenger it was just longer for me. Sunroof. You get a really big panoramic sunroof two really big glass panels. And that's about it. After watching a lot of sound of music growing up, I will tell you that I'm happy that I don't have a German dad for this reason. They'd make me sit back here. <laughs> but don't worry, it gets better. This does recline pretty well. I feel pretty good back here. It feels very, very solid, like I expect it to. There is two USB-Cs, one for me and one for Hans. Then I do have all my HVAC controls over there that I can adjust in every way possible. I do have comfort when I pull this down. I do have an armrest. I like how they've placed these cup holders right in the center and they are on a vertical axis as opposed to a horizontal one. It's right here, it's not widthwise. So my arms are taken care of on my right as well as my left. Because on my left here, I have a grab handle that makes me feel really secure back here. This is thought through, feels good. Including taking a look at these cool crested rear headrests. Now let's see how much room we have in the back of the Cayenne. Every Cayenne is gonna be like this if it is the full SUV and not the coupe. Now you do have two buttons right here. This one is to open the trunk and also set the height of it. So you have to manually push it down or push it up. So let me give you an example. I press this, I press it again, and then I hold this down for about five seconds or so and then it should give me flashing lights or that noise and bam, it's set to this height. So now every time I open and close it, it's gonna come to this height. So let me push it back to where it was. Or press this button again, go back up. Nope, other way around. Nope, okay, let me push this up. Okay, here we go. All the way up. And now, pull this down, it should do the same thing, and then it's gonna open and close to that height. I don't know how people are this short in the world. Look at me, I'm definitely not a tall guy, and look where I'm standing. It should actually go higher. Anyways, let's see how much room we have. As far as depth goes, we have 40 inches on the dot. 
Length is important to know because of course you can fit stuff in. As far as width goes, you have 43 and a half. And in terms of height, for those that actually care about these kind of measurements, I will give it to you and it is, oh my God, come on measuring tape. It is just about 30. So voila, there you have it. Okay, as far as storage goes, you do have some on the side with this little netting here. A bit on this left side, on the right side, there's absolutely nothing. And how about underneath? Underneath, when I pull this up, there should be a temporary tire and voila, there you have it. There's a temporary, a little bit of storage there, but more for like, you know, car cleaning products, so on and so forth. So if there's any companies out there that wanna sponsor us and you are a car detailing product company, we'll take your money. Now, if you take a look at the back seats, you have a 40, 20, 40 split. And of course you can put them down individually. That's no problem. Then you have these buttons over here. What do they do? This has air suspension, so you can drop it by hitting this button and that lowers the load floor so you can put stuff into this rear trunk pretty easily. So Porsche says this is the most upgrades it's ever given to any car in history, apparently, in terms of facelifting and upgrades. This is not a full redesign because, well, it kind of looks the same. They've definitely sharpened up the outside. They've made it more boxy, less soft and rounded, but they've upgraded the suspension, the dynamics, the design, like I talked about, and the equipment inside the car. So this is the most upgraded facelifted they've ever done. That's cool, that's cool. But I wish they kept the analog gauges, or at least made it an option. That'd be pretty cool. If you could opt for cool analog gauges. You get the designs and stuff, that's awesome. You can make it all different shapes and sizes, beautiful. But if you can opt for $7,000 matrix headlights, you can also opt for analog gauges, in my opinion, because Porsche should be able to do anything. Joys, man. Joys to drive. Oh. Oh, it's amazing. Excellent brakes. It's everything I want out of a car that's not a car. Just a great job of this. The smoothness of this Porsche Cayenne is amazing. I love how it's super solid in here and it's smooth and comfortable and everything I'd want out of a midsize SUV. Porsche just does driving dynamics just so well. Because when Porsche started making SUVs, people were like, what? What are you doing? You're watering down the brand. No, don't do it. But now look how far they've come, especially with this exterior design. I like the fact that it's not rounded anymore. I like the cutoffs. I like the squaredness of it. This interior is amazing. There's nothing to complain about Cayennes, man. The older ones, yeah, I mean, some people love it because they're nostalgic about it. But this is the real clean one. Everything about it's excellent. Very minimal. Like they've taken minimalism to the next step here. That's why I love it. The drive, well, it's a Porsche. Not much else to say about that. So in the last couple of generations, I would say the X5 to me is still more me. But now with this exterior change and this interior, yes, I know about the piano black on the bottom and this little shifter gear, but that does not matter. This is just a great all around, affordable is a very difficult word to use, but at this price point, this is a really, really good buy. Just the driving dynamics makes it enjoyable to use. And the fact that they're thinking about us by putting the V8 back in is huge news. Oh, Porsche, you nailed it. I love it. And if you feel the same, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. And if you don't, well, Catch you on the next one.